So we are all experiencing this Venus retrograde period, isn't it? It's happening from the 22nd of July till the 3rd of September, in which initially it is going to be till 5th of August in the sign of Leo retrograding, and then it's going to go into the nakshatra of Ashlesha in the sign of Cancer in the same retrogression motion. So when we all are experiencing Venus in retrogression, some of us are not going to experience it so intensely as the others. And who are the ones who are going to experience it intensely? Well, some of the houses, right, are going to make you feel very intense effect. For example, this sign, uh, the house, 11th house, which is the house for all your desires, which also on the negative side brings greed. Uh, if you're going to experience this, this in the 8th house, it's going to be impacting you in a very different way than what it's going to do for the other houses. The 6th house is going to definitely bring you um, more of this Venus retrograde jazz in your life, isn't it? When you are experiencing this Venus in Leo and in Cancer retrograde effect, you may be experiencing it more when it is in your 12th house because the 12th house is all about unconditional love and it's also the house of bed pleasures. So either there is something that is unconditional or otherwise there's just something that is, you know, because um, there was a self-fulfillment need that was required. And, and in both cases, this is going to be tough because whenever Venus is in the effect of retrogression, it's going to bring back those people in your life with whom your karma wasn't over. It's going to, if, if let's say because Venus is the planet of finances, let's say you had something in your mind regarding finances and you had opened up a portfolio or something and you had invested somewhere in some place and now that thing is just going to come back into your life all popping up again asking you to finish that karma that you had uh, subscribed for uh, you had subscribed for an SIP okay now you need to put in your money you had uh, put in your uh, money in some like insurance money or something you need to cater to that particular thing in your life you will be talking to you know like uh, some people in your bank and you'll be getting it fixed these are some of the very common things for venus in retrogression especially when the venus retrogression happens to take place for anyone uh, that is having like um you may be a Gemini ascendant because now from the third house it's going into the second house. You may also be, um, um, you may also be like a, a Cancer ascendant because now from fifth house it's going and look, it's going towards your like your first house, right? So um, this is going to be some of the even for Taurus ascendant it's going to be one of the challenging things because um, anyway for Taurus ascendants they've been making like too many uh, expenses their Guru Chandal Yoga is happening itself in the 12th house that is your uh, Jupiter and Rahu is sitting there itself so um, for some of the ascendants it's going to be very challenging even like let's say we talk about Sagittarius ascendant then Sagittarius ascendants also need to keep in mind that uh, it's their 6th and 11th lord right um, same goes for for um, um, Aries Ascendant because Aries Ascendant is like pretty much self-explanatory. The second house and the seventh house uh, things are going to experience a retrograde effect and uh, for you your Venus will be transiting from fifth to the fourth house and to the peace of mind house and, um, and all of it right. Um, so what will happen from the 6th of August till the 3rd of September where Venus is actually in retrogression experiencing uh, ex experiencing a transit through its Gandanth point as well and it's still in retrograde motion right so now it's actually practically it will be looking towards the third um, third zodiac that is the Gemini and that means like let's say if you're an Aries ascendant it's going to basically look backwards towards your third house it will be looking backwards but pretty much it's going to be at the end of the nakshatra of cancer uh, zodiac belt which is your ashlesha only 
if this is the case well um whenever any planet looks um backward it's ref- it's asking you to reflect on those areas and the significations of that particular house you get it right um what does this actually mean so for that you need to just understand that where your your gemini is going to fall in okay um so if you are an aries ascendant it's the third house so it's the house of friends it's the house of networking connecting with people your communication your communication style your skills um acquiring skills and you know learning more skills and uh, putting them to use as well right that and your short distance travel so that is for aries okay uh, then for taurus because it's the second house then uh it's the it's the the earning capacity it's your um your family your family that where you have come from your mother father's family not your in-laws or not the one that you know beyond it um then um it's also your savings right so that's what is up with the, but because it's also your value system second house it's your food it's the throat and the mouth region right so that's one then for gemini gemini actually um for you it's your ascendant lord itself so your venus will be ret- in the retrograde motion in the your uh, second house and from there it's going to basically look at your ascendant so when it's looking at your ascendant it's pretty much looking at your entire life okay um your personality your persona your physique your body uh it's asking you to basically for gemini ascendance is going to be too much because it's 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 basically going to ask you to gather yourself in all areas of your life so that's how the venus in cancer retrograde is going to have an impact on um Ca- gemini ascendance and for gemini ascendance it's going to be pretty um too much because it's your ascend it's going to basically look at your ascendant from the second house um so a lot of basic foundation foundational stuff is going to get into line then when you go uh, towards the we have got cancer so from cancer cancer ascendants are basically going to experience the retrograde effect right now from second it will move to the first house and when it moves to the first house it's basically looking at your 12th house and when it's looking at your 12th house it's it's asking you to look at your expenses it's asking you to look at all the the money that is just going away and it will basically ask you to put things into perspective that why is it going away because let's not forget venus is the sign is is the particular zodiac for security it's the zodiac for um security okay and because cancer is not a very settled zodiac so anyway cancer ascendants worry about money whether they whether some uh, cancer ascendant is really able to uh have their financial portfolio um, manage it well or not depends upon the chart the individual chart but when i just look at the basic foundations of a cancer ascendant and how the cancer ascendants operate and everything this is this becomes very important so um then what is happening because 12th house is also the land that is like far away from your home it's your imagination it's your dream world um it's your sleep okay it's the bed pleasures as i said and venus is the sign of bed pleasures so basically you will be thinking about all of those things uh and everything that i explained not just one it's not something that is stuck in one place moving ahead to the leo ascendant see leo ascendants are um already having the this venus retrograde right now in leo and from here is going to move to the 12th house um and then it will go to the it will be basically looking backwards towards the 11th house so what does it mean when it's looking backwards towards the 11th house for leo ascendant now you need to keep your desires in check now you need to keep your 
greed in check now you need to also keep your um uh what sort of money <clears throat> when you do the hard work that's the 10th house but what you gain out of it the second from the 10th is the 11th house now 11th house you need to keep in mind as to what is it that you're um, basically acquiring from all the hard work that you're doing are you really getting paid well are you like happy with your salary so all these um uh, sort of uh, introspection and reflection will be there at default so there's something you can't it will be there by default and uh, because it's the is the in general house of desires the desires of the heart you're going to think about them also that am i really doing something to to achieve those desires uh, moving forward to virgo ascendant virgo ascendants basically right now are experiencing their venus in the 12th house in retrograde motion and from leo it's going to go backwards into the nakshatra of ashlesha in the belt of um, uh, cancer so when your venus is in cancer in retrograde emotion uh, effect in the 10th house then you'll be thinking about all your desires but you will be seeing that am i doing something for those desires or not well i i have all these desires i want all this from all my from my life and all of it but what am i doing you'll be um, questioning your karma all right you'll be questioning um your deeds your uh, the hard work that you put into your profession so you'll be pretty much uh, wondering about all of that and introspecting and reflecting and then you will probably come up with some changes because venus is an emotional sign which i think i covered it thinks about security it thinks about the peace of mind it's it's a very holistic kind of security it's not just one thing that is materialistic that which is capricorn by the way which is more like productivity doing and then acquiring and then achieving and success no this energy that is the sign cancer is is very holistic in nature so when this holistic in nature thing is going in retro grade motion you can only imagine what it's doing it's asking you to think about for virgo ascendants all the attachments that you have all the um emotions you have okay everything that you want and because it's 11th house is all the also salary and all of it income and all of it uh, money right but it's also the house of other people elder siblings it's also the house of disputes so if you've done something really bad if there is a dispute that has happened you are going to look back at your deeds and think about it and let's say if there is no dispute because it's a benefic uh let's say and you just in your and depends upon what all other planets are already sitting in your wherever this venus retrograde actually happens right so uh whenever any planet just retrogrades towards the 10th house it's asking you to be slow but be there because that's what 10th house is that's what saturn is okay fine you don't want to you cannot go fast because you don't have the martian effect over there well and fine at least try to be there and make it work we are going to move towards libra ascendant so libra ascendant people are going to experience this transit in the 10th house and the 10th house from 11th it will be going to the 10th so now you are basically questioning your dharma because now it's looking back towards the 9th house and when it looks back towards the 9th house all the philosophy of life all the higher knowledge wisdom of life teachers gurus okay mentors you you are now reflecting upon what they've given to you and how much of ecstasy and other things you've enjoyed in your life because of them and uh, while you're doing your karma you are also trying to uh remember your father's learning because let's not forget that venus is also the sign of nostalgia sorry cancer is the sign of nostalgia it's the house of emotions it's the uh, zodiac for tears and it's the zodiac for 
just like intuitive leadership so while you are doing well and everything venus is gone retrograde and it's asking you to look at the ninth house things in the nice ninth house thing basically is that please be open please be expansive in your mind and in your thoughts and have noble thoughts um try to explore philosophy try to explore a religion that you relate to most or um something like that then you've got your scorpio ascendant and for scorpio ascendant naturally the cancer is in the ninth house so the so the from 10th is going to uh, retrograde towards the 9th house and now it will be looking at the 8th house okay so whenever venus is retrograding towards the 8th house any planet is retrograding but particularly here venus venus is trying to teach you uh, about um, what are the changes that you need to make in your mind okay the subconscious mind um you need to be more grounded okay you need to be more uh, seated in your reality more grounded more um settled in your thinking because the 8th house is not very settling in nature okay so whatever that gets you not so settled whatever that makes you um a little bit startled you have to look back at those things you have to basically introspect about those things and because 8th house is the house of sadhana let's not forget about that so when sadhana comes into picture how well are you doing your sadhana because venus is mrit sanjeevani venus is the planet that um brings alive the dead alive okay so when it has the capacity to bring a dead person into an alive person that means it's very healing in nature and the 8th house is the house of medical emergencies 8th house is the house of um, you know like all those things that come suddenly and for a scorpio ascendant to be having that thing going on uh, your mercury happens to fall in the 8th house and when your mercury mercury and there's a lot of mercury and energy in the 8th house you need to kind of sort of like um, look at your communication look at your friends your social networking everything that happens in the privacy 8th house is also privacy so scorpion ascendants will be kind of busy there reflecting about upon those things that okay my friends been doing this secretive thing or that secretive thing and i was not really aware about it at the same time um <clears throat> do i want to support this person into this thing um something like that and then also doing sadhana that okay whatever happens in the world happens in the world but my mind is turbulent i may i can maybe actually use some sort of um, um sadhana right um not the lady sadhana i mean to say like literally sadhana which is a very pure and pious thing um <clears throat> it's like doing some spiritual practice uh so yeah then we move forward to the sagittarian ascendants and now for Sa- i sagittarian ascendants are going to have um their venus in basically the ninth house so they have it in the ninth house right now and for all of you sagittarian ascendants venus is going to transit from ninth to the eighth house now when this venus is transiting to the eighth house it's it's going to look backwards it's going to look backwards it's basically going to look towards the 7th house now the thing is that when it's looking towards the 7th house what is the 7th house 7th house is the house of um, okay very good ants bit me 7th house is the house of your partnerships your spouse your um, dealings with public your dealings with masses so i know that the 4th and the 10th house is of masses but so is the 7th house because if you look first house is the self and the 7th house is like everybody that is in front of you so every interaction that you have with anyone you need to be kind of like careful okay because introspection and reflection is only happening because you need to be careful right we cannot deny the fact so now you need to be careful about what sort of interactions are you are like you know uh, what sort of people you are coming across and whether uh, it it is really something that will be fruitful for you because let's let's not deny that okay the 8th house is of sex and all of it right so is the 7th house like 
are you even going to um have it with yourself no right wherever we have some sort of intimacy or something we have it with the other person and the other person is the opposite sex another gender besides you so that is uh, the energy that seventh house has but it's also like people in general it's 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 people in general let's not forget the seventh house is the house of relationships is of other people and balanced through other people so now your venus is in the eighth house it's looking backwards it's looking towards the seventh house take care of your business take care of your of the dealings that you do with people take care of um your spouse if you're married and the interactions that you will be having with your spouse because mercury is also going to go into retrogression and for sagittarius ascendant it's the natural 7th house so a lot of mishap can take place and that is something that we need to be careful about as sagittarius ascendants and other ascendants as well which i'll be covering but not in this video because mercury retrograde effect will happen from 30th of august and i'll uh, talk about it soon now let's go to the um capricorn so capricorn um you are having your venus in the 8th house and from 8th house it is going towards the 7th and from 7th it will actually be retrograding towards the 6th now the venus retrogression energy in the 7th mm now it wants you to look at your daily routine it wants you to think about all the debts you have okay it wants you to um take your debt seriously it wants you to take your uh, karmic um, fulfillment seriously because sixth house is the house of prarabdh and prarabdh means pending karma and there already your gemini is sitting with the sign of 3 that means that all the friends that you deal with all the networkings that you have okay they are very karmic in nature but because sixth house at default and third gemini is also communication right but what's happening is that sixth house at its default is your daily routine is your daily um, is your health is is um, your uh, intestines so when it's looking backwards maybe you've been eating too much maybe you've been doing emotional eating because venus in cancer is what uh venus is food moon is food moon is emotional eating venus is extravagant eating right all those things can happen and that can fuck up your i i did i use that word i'm really sorry that can mess i'm so sorry coming from from me i'm really sorry it can mess up your system so when that happens mercury retrograde i think i manifested the energy of mercury retrograde time i had planned not to edit this video but this happened this is really screwed up okay so yeah i use swear words sometimes anyways so what will happen now now you need to take care of your daily routine now you need to take care of uh, the little details in in your day um like that now we will move forward to the last second lagna which is the aquarius lagna right now if you're a aquarius lagna and being an aquarius ascendant your moon is going to be is going to go from 7th to 6th and from 6th it's looking backwards towards the 5th now your 5th house is of past life 5th house is a very beautiful house because it's the house of your intelligence 5th house is the house because only because we have intelligence we are able to create something when we lack intelligence we are not able to create anything so fifth house um venus is in cancer it's looking towards the fifth house you may want to think about because it's also our students think about your students if you're a teacher if you're not a teacher think about your uh spouse or think about all the romantic energy exchange transactions with your gf bf lover etc whatever slash right uh, because um, fifth house is the house of romance as well and only an intelligent person can romance and romance well by the way uh, this is something i'll discuss about 
in my video on YouTube in the about the fifth house. I've been really meaning to do that, but I need more, more, more research before I put anything out. I just don't want to make any goof ups. Okay, so because it's a it's a huge responsibility. I think about my fifth house a lot. Okay, and I think about it in detail. What I put out, what I put out to my students who are learning from me. Although I don't like to call you as my students, but that's what I've been told by you people. Anyway, so Venus, Venus's energy is now gone backwards. And please think about your creativity. Please think about anything that gives you fun. Uh, and you cannot have fun until unless your ego is well in place. Okay. If you're too ego is egotistical, if you're someone who is very much into like um, um, ego clashes okay uh, then maybe you will not enjoy this transit a lot so it's 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 basically going to ask you to fix these things F fix your ability to create fix your abilities to um, procreate even you know like for people who are thinking about child bearing and all of it it's, it's going to ask you to manifest um, intelligence by activating your past life uh, karma. Okay. And your past life karma is, is your um, dharma also. Because your fifth house is one of the dharma trikons. Okay. The child is playing cricket. Now, the last and final ascendant the Pisces ascendant the Pisces ascendant see people for you Venus has gone from sixth to fifth and the fifth it's looking towards it's like looking backwards to the fourth the cycle gets completed so your ego is in place and everything Venus being in the fifth house well and fine okay but what about your peace of mind what about the security because fourth house is security it's not only the emotional axis in your body um emotional body but it's also the um home because fourth house is home and and fourth house is the house where you know you are like okay i'm relaxed you come back home and you sleep at home only you don't sleep on the roads or something until unless you don't have a home right this is what the true power of fourth house is and that's what that's why it's a peace of mind let's say forget about home you may be a nomad or something you may be a person who roams in their recreational van or something but now uh, then what is home the home is actually real our heart having peace having a sense of security with oneself not with other people although although when we have it with oneself we have it with other people that's why the fourth and the tenth axis is the axis of masses but i'll get to that later and that's why for you pisces ascendant people your venus is retrograding towards the fourth house you need to think about your peace of mind you need to think about anything that settles you and and that settlement has to be very much emotional in nature that settlement needs to be um, very nourishing in nature because it's the natural fourth house is ruled by moon naturally so all the significations of moon come into place whether your food nourishes you or not whether your thoughts nourishes you or not your feelings and all of those things so i hope that uh, this video made sense i think this is one of the first videos that i've done wherein i'm discussing a, an effect of transit in for all these zodiacs and i really enjoyed making this video i hope you enjoyed listening to me thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon next time subscribe to my channel bye